But what is NDI? I mean, this is the core of what we do and what we're here to talk about, about moving content across networks. NDI stands for Network Device Interface, and it's a proprietary protocol that we developed uh, back in 2015 and have evolved over time. In fact, the actual precursors to NDI actually go way back to about 2004, when customers wanted to start bringing in content and PowerPoints directly off laptops without the need for additional uh, computer or hardware devices to bring that in. So even back then, we started moving content across the network, and you could argue uh, we've been playing around with network and video for the longest in delivering rich media experiences. NDI is royalty free. It's an openly accessible SDK, which you can download from www.ndi.tv. Uh, we'll go into a bit more detail about how all of this works, but if you want to get into the deeper detail or even start playing around with our development tools yourself, uh, you can get those from the ndi.tv website with additional information as well. So some goals around what we set out to achieve with NDI are as follows. We wanted to make sure that it could work on existing gigabit ethernet networks. Gigabit Ethernet is the lowest common denominator in terms of IP. Almost every computer device and every network now has it. The majority of offices and buildings have Gigabit Ethernet as that baseline transport. So we need to make sure it could work with that, but also ensure that NDI could work with higher bandwidth networks as they become, availability, uh, as they become increasingly available. We're already seeing 10 gig now uh, become widely adopted, but also now 100 gig, 120 gig and beyond. And when you actually move NDI onto those high bandwidth networks, we simply can deliver more, more streams and more throughput to actually enable you to do more rather than requiring you to have to move to those higher end networks straight away. NDI has been designed to be as easy to set up and configure as possible with automatic discovery and make sure it's as easy as possible for end users to utilize in terms of human naming conventions. And we'll cover that in more detail in just a moment. We also want to make sure that NDI is completely interoperable. We're not in the business of leaving people behind as we move across generations, but also we've seen the transition from HD to 4K. Already people are talking about 8 and 16K. So we want to make sure that the equipment that you invest in that uses NDI now will work with equipment that uses NDI in the future as well. NDI has been designed to be as flexible as possible and also ensure that it can work over long distances. We can move NDI over things such as VPN, for example, or long distance networks. We have customers that can move NDI between different cities and towns. We've even got people trying it intercontinentally. Uh, but NDI, is because it's software based, has also been designed so it could be deployed in cloud deployments into the future as well, or hybrid models where we're using local sources and also remote sources as well. Another aspect of NDI was to use commercial off the shelf IT and hardware wherever possible. We want to make sure that we're using com uh, standard computers, mobile devices, as well as dedicated devices as well. So you can use almost any network switch within reason. We always recommend an enterprise class switch as the baseline minimum, but the idea is it's as flexible as possible to work with the infrastructure that you've got in a majority of cases. We also wanted to make sure that the ecosystem of products that we're building is also as wide as possible and not just new tech product. So we actually have, through that royalty-free SDK, the ability for anybody to develop software, and then vendors that want to integrate NDI into hardware can do that on a licensing agreement as well. With NDI, because we're on an IP fabric, one of the key benefits to actually working with that type of environment is that everything is bi-directional. Every cable can carry multiple feeds, both in and out across the network, drastically reducing the cable account and also the cost of actually installing infrastructure as well. In fact, every transmitter is also a receiver, so we can send that data back and forth. Devices can encode and decode at the same time, again, reducing the complexity of what you need to lay out. But why NDI for the AV space? Well, we feel that actually NDI out of all the current IP protocols at the moment is the only one that can cater for both traditional broadcast production and video creation, as well as the AV markets as well, rather than focusing on either camp, as we'll find with some of the other protocols. So we can actually ensure that you can combine all these different environments together on that one single fabric for all of your video and IP fabric. We, at the moment, you'll look out there, you'll see that there are at least two varieties of NDI that are currently working together. These are going across three different deployment types. We have NDI where it originally started, which you'll find in computers. So you'll find it in software, our TriCaster production systems, IO modules that you put on the network there. And that can operate on both Windows and Mac platforms and also starting to see more emergence within Linux as well. 
Then we launched something called NDI-HX, which was a lower bandwidth version of NDI, optimized for utilizing in existing encoders, so things such as PTZ cameras and the like. So you'll see cameras from ourselves, Sony, Panasonic, utilizing the NDI-HX version of the protocol, and we'll explain that in more detail in a moment. But we also then have things like NDI embedded. So we can embed NDI within a hardware chip, use that with little mini converters like this HDMI adapter that we're using here today. Uh, Mark's got an SDI version there as well, but also in more modern PTZ cameras as well. So we're starting to see cameras from Panasonic and BirdDog with high bandwidth NDI embedded. This isn't to say that NDI HX is lesser than NDI, it's just a different means with less data. And again, it's all about picking the right tool for the job. And one of those example uses of NDI HX is that we can actually deploy it onto mobile devices. So things like the Apple iPhone or iPad can now actually be turned into a usable camera, which you can utilize on your network. And uh, I'm just gonna switch over to one of our software tools very quickly. Uh, this is called the NDI Studio Monitor, which you can download from ndi.tv. Uh, we also have some scan converter applications, so I can turn my laptop feed into another source. And uh, Mark's gonna explain a little bit more uh, using his phone now just to show you uh, what else we're using here today. Thank you. So yeah, just a quick example behind the scenes here, just using the camera. It's great having the phone camera. It gives you 4K quality you know, in your pocket. And I can show you some of the things we're using. Here's some bird dog cameras. Here we're using the, uh, the new NewTek 4K camera and there's the NewTek Lucky Duck. Uh, we're using a combination of bird dog converters and NewTek converters. So this is great, you know, just to be able to use this to be able to show somebody what's going on in a demonstration in a very quick and easy way. There's nothing like it and it's a free application. So uh, yeah, very powerful, uh, amazing little product. And just like everything with NDI, you know, we can actually look that up on the network there. So in this pull down list here, you can see all the sources that we're utilizing today in the studio monitor application and they're just up there. So this is that name based, uh, this name based discovery uh, that I was mentioning earlier on. And uh, I think it's a good opportunity, just a moment for us to actually unpack how that's actually operating for your users at an end standpoint there. So I'm just gonna minimize that for a minute and uh, let's just go move across quickly. Uh, one last thing on mobile devices and something that's uh, been often asked for us at trade shows such as ISE is actually going to mobile capture as well. So as well as being able to utilize a mobile camera using NDI HX on the iPad or the iPhone devices all the way up to 4K, we can also now do immediate screen capture from those devices so you can gather content from any iOS application that might be running on your phone or tablet. So let's have a look at how this actual operation of discovery and how it actually behaves on the network and what makes NDI so different compared to other IP protocols. Here is a gigabit network. I'm not gonna show you the actual full illustration of how the network switches will connect because there's so many different models of deployment from VLAN or uh, star and leaf type methodologies depending on the size of the project you're gonna build. But from a software standpoint, we treat everything as one single subnet. Within that subnet, we can have up to 255 devices, and each of those devices can be delivering multiple streams and receiving multiple streams. So we'll populate this network. Let's put an IO module on the device. This is one of our one new rack mount devices, and we'll give you eight SDI in or out or both from, this, from the one unit on the network. So this allows you to break into existing uh, infrastructure that you'll already have out there. At the other end of the network, I'm going to put one of our TriCaster production systems where you can basically do all the creative work and generate your content as well. In fact, we can populate this network with as many sources as we want. While a single subnet is tied to 255 uh, individual devices with multiple channels, you can actually bridge subnets together. Our largest site at the moment in Sweden is actually totaling 750 simultaneous sources on their network right now. All of those devices, when they're on that network, don't generate any heavy traffic. There is no data moving across the network, except for one small thing. Every single device will broadcast an MDNS packet across the network. Within this packet is going to be the name of the device, and that would be a human name. So it'd be Camera A Studio 1, Camera 2. It might be your video wall processor. You call the devices something that the user is going to recognize at the other end. Within that packet is contained details like the IP addresses, the port ranges, can it be controlled or not. So everything there is actually handled automatically within the NDI protocol for you. We can of course do static models of addressing this. There are things like discovery servers. So if the customer doesn't want to use MDNS for discovery, we can do manual discovery and other services to build around this too. On the receiving device, all of the receivers will actually then generate a list of the names that can be heard out the network. 
and that will be where the operator or the end user then operates the software. So that was that list that you saw in the studio monitor briefly just now. The user or operator then chooses that device by name and then and only then do we actually start moving data across the, across the network to carry video, audio and metadata as well. Within that, there are two streams, a high bandwidth stream and a preview stream, which are locked together to generate multi-viewers, so we're highly efficient on the network, but then a switchable high bandwidth stream when you're using a new tech production system that we can also then generate the high quality output at the other end as well. Other devices and other receivers uh, will actually only use the full program bandwidth stream, but that's just one of the little tricks that we have within our product line for the production system side. When it comes to NDI-HX, NDI-HX is more efficient. As I said, it's lower bandwidth. So with full NDI, we're looking at 150 megabit for a 1080p50 stream, 375 for a 4K stream, which gets you quite a lot of streams down a single gigabit network in one direction. So it's seven when we're looking at HD, between two and three at 4K. But with NDI-HX, it's a 10 to one compression again. Uh, same resolution, same frame rates, but only 15 megabit per second for HD or 30 megabit per second for 4K. Does exactly the same job, works the same way with the discovery, but as with all PTZ cameras, whether NDI-HX or full NDI, we can pass that control protocol back across that same connection from your receiving device as well. As you scale up, we repeat these patterns. We generate more streams from more devices, and again, when they're not being pulled into a system, there's only that broadcast packet going out from that device. And in fact, multiple devices can send multiple streams at the same time. So a camera can quite happily go to free receiving endpoints, or you could end up with an SDI cable going into one device if it's software-based, and you could go to seven different targets. And this is all done using standard unicast networking, or one stream per connection. But if you need to go up to a scale where maybe you exceed the network bandwidth on a device or actually on the actual available network bandwidth on the switch, we can of course also enable multicast for those larger scale projects when needed. So let's just do a quick summary of those key benefits of NDI along with a couple of others. So the main bit for your customers is it's user-friendly name-based operation. So they don't need to learn networking or IP addresses to actually use the system. We have that automated discovery to actually complement that fully. Data flows only when it's needed. It's not a constant perpetual thing, like say the older days of when we work with HD base T as well. It's very, very high performance. So we do full bandwidth, full frame rate, all at a very, very low compression ratio, but we keep the full quality of completely visually lossless. It's high performance, so we can work on mobile devices and software and hardware. Uh, there are low bandwidth modes available, including working over Wi-Fi, uh, like Mark was showing with the iPhone just now. And all of this is actually generationally lossless, even when you distribute it. With full NDI, we can encode and decode up to a thousand times before there is any visual degradation in image quality. So one last couple of things I just want to point out with NDI there is that it's completely resolution, frame rate, and color space independent. Uh, we can support SD, HD, 4K, even 8K on the same network if we wanted to do so. Uh, we can have different frame rates on devices running together. We can have even different color spaces operating together. And it's been designed to be as elastic as possible to completely cater for what the future may hold, as well as the challenges that we're facing today, especially as we start moving towards 4K. When working with an NDI within the AV context, there are pretty much four different room types that we could look at as examples. So meeting rooms, your auditorium, multi-purpose rooms, but also even things like TV studios can all be meshed together on the same fabric, on the same network, and actually have full interoperability between them. You want to have some execs in a TV studio and show that in the auditorium, no problem. You want to relay what's in the auditorium and put that into breakout rooms and other spaces. Again, that's absolutely no issue because it can all talk the same language and operate on the same fabric there as well. Here is a total ecosystem. We have quite an expansive range of products on there, um, but also you know, and a whole number of third party uh, different vendors that we also work with as well across the board to almost cater for any sort of aspect or any type of deployment across these different productions uh, that you might want to utilize.